morning, everybody. This is Danny from Deep South Homestead out here with Ms. Wanda. We are about to get ready to plant our potatoes. We have several different varieties we're going to be planting. Uh, now, the uh, Deep South potatoes will be planted in another garden off over to the side uh, by the house uh, just because we want to make sure there's no issues with those potatoes. Because we've had them for four years now, we want to make sure we make it a number five. And, uh, what we're going to be doing here today, guys, is some of you may get upset about this, some of you may not. I don't really care. I'm about growing food right now because we've got to have it. But I will be using commercial fertilizer on this because we've tried to use the organic method. We've tried to go with the other fertilizers, ended up with Grazon, Remedy, you know, 2,4-D and all that in there, poisoning our crops, ruining our land. So. It's safer just to use the synthetic. We're going to keep an eye on the amount of salt content in the uh, soil. I've talked to several horticulturists. A plant doesn't know the difference between organic and non-organic. So we're about raising food for the future because it's going to have to happen and we've got to do what we've got to do. So we're going to be putting down some triple 13. My daddy was a strong advocate of putting out a lot of fertilizer. Now my daddy grew up with old black Joe. Uh, we can't get that anymore. Uh, he had pure urea and the pure fertilizers didn't have all the salt and chemicals in it. But he would put anywhere between five and six hundred pounds per acre. And my daddy grew food that was unbelievable. Now I'm, <laughs> I'm not going to put that amount because I don't want that high salt content in my soil. But I am going to fertilize it pretty good because these are potatoes. There will not be a second fertilization on it. It's a one-time deal. I want it to have enough to last throughout the growing season. Now we will be coming back later on and we will be plowing it a couple of times, but bedding it up. But guys, we don't fertilize it when we do that. And if we do, it's a light side dressing. It ain't much because potatoes really don't need a lot of anything else. Me and Ms. Wanda's got some camaraderie going back and forth between each other here. Kind of makes me laugh a little bit. But uh, that's, the, that's the beauty of working with your partner. Um, what I have here is you just seen me when I was plowing. I have a cultivator set up with a what's called a bull tongue in the middle. It has two sweeps on the outside edge. The two sweeps, what they do is they mark where my tires are at. That tells me where my next row should start at. The bull tongue is a six inch bull tongue. It actually plows the furrow down through the middle here for me. Now, because we're still so early in the year, today is February the 2nd, there's a possibility of lots of rain in the ground staying wet. So we're not going to be planting deep in the ground. We're going to be planting Primarily, this is going to be almost ground level, even though it looks like there's a deep furrow there. By the time the ground is all broke up and bedded up a little bit, it's really just ground level. So what we're going to be doing as the potatoes grow, they'll be out of the ground and up on a bed so that when the spring rains come, we don't have a problem with them rotting. So we're about to get ready to put our fertilizer in and we're going to take when we do We'll take a hoe and kind of come down in here behind it. We'll just kind of rake and mix the fertilizer in with the dirt so that the potatoes are not laying in just a pure bed of fertilizer. And the fertilizer is all around the potatoes right there. And as the roots grow, they'll just be right there at the fertilizer. They won't have to run way off out there and hunt it. So that's our plan for today. So we're fixing to get ready to start putting down some fertilizer. Okay, one other thing I want to mention, this is ground right here that was not limed because potatoes don't need a sweet soil. They need a soil pH of around 5 or 5.5 to do their best. So there's been no lime put in this soil here, just so y'all uh, know that. Okay guys, remember in our tool video I talked about the hose. This is a narrow one, but very wide. This is the hoe we're going to use today. It's a hoe of choice. We're going to turn it narrow ways. 
We're gonna run down through here and we're just gonna kind of mix this fertilize in with the dirt. There we are, two rows down. Okay guys, I wanna show you a little bit of the difference here uh, in fresh bought potatoes that have been cut and allowed to cure and potatoes we've saved here at Deep South Homestead. So as you kinda of get an idea of what we're talking about when we talk about saving potatoes and how it's so difficult here in the Deep South. These are the red potatoes here we buy locally from the heart, uh, feed store. I don't really know if they're the Lesotas, red Lesotas or red Pontiac. It's just a local red potato that we buy here. We've cut them up. They've completely cured. The starches on them, you know, done set over. They're good. Ready to go on the ground. The eyes are starting to form on them here a little bit right there. You can see the eye forming. Um, so that's what fresh ones look like that's been cut. That's from our local ones. Now, here, these come from Hoss Tool. These are the French fingerlings. We've cut them up. They've cured over real good. Um, they're beginning to uh, make their eyes on them a little bit. Not a lot yet, but they're starting to form some. You're beginning to see uh, where they're at. They're starting to swell. I mean, it's kind of difficult, but right there you can see a little tiny place where they're trying to start. They haven't quite got there yet. But let me show you. These are the French fingerlings that we saved last year. These came from Hoss Tool. We planted these, grew them, saved them ourselves, and this is what they look like coming out of our cellar. I mean, look at this, guys. They are, I mean, they're really kicking it and going. So we'll be uh, probably just planting the whole potato on these. Now what we'll do is we'll come in here and we're going to snip these off a little bit right there. It won't hurt a thing in the world. We'll just snip them off, and we're going to see Deep South Saved French fingerlings compared to Hall's Tool cut fingerlings this year to see how they produce. Now this is what they look like coming out of our cellar. That's why it's so difficult for us in the south to be able to save potatoes all year. That's why our deep south potatoes, we usually replant them every few months to try to keep the cycle going. So we're gonna move them out of the way. Okay, these are the Yukon Gold. We got these from Hoss Tool. We got a few of them to get started. The eyes are starting to pop out on them real good since we cut them. Now they've been cut about a week. That's about the right amount of time for them to start curing. But guys, here's some Yukon Golds that we saved from last year. Right, we bought from Hoss Tool last year and we saved a few just to see what they would do in the deep south. And here they are. They look like that. Some of them, some of them's got, you know, longer runners on them like that, which we'll snip some of them off. Guys, we're gonna plant the whole potato on them. But this is what happens in the deep south here. This is the Yukon Gold. We're gonna plant these versus our own saved ones. And we're gonna see what the difference is. Do they produce any different or do they produce the same? Okay, these are the Kenebec Whites right here. These, uh, we bought these from Hoss Tool last year. Raised our own, was a fantastic potato. Very thin skinned potato, literally loved it. We saved some this year to plant and looks like they're starting to try to sprout on us. Kind of shriveled up a little bit. We won't be cutting them. We're gonna plant the whole potato so that they don't rot. We've done learn that in the deep south. We don't slice them once they start getting this kind of wrinkly look. They do better if we just put them in holes. So we're going to plant the Kenebec Whites to uh, see how they do. This here is the Austrian Crescent. We bought those from Hoss Tool last year. We saved them. And you can see what they look like after last May of last year. This is what they look like. We'll be planting the potato hole to see what kind of a harvest we get off of the Austrian Crescent to see if it's any different or if they actually come out pretty good and if we can actually save them like this for a year and they still do okay this is another year of experimenting with the Austrian Crescent okay these are some potatoes we got from Hall's Tool it's a new variety for us it's called a uh, 
Purple Majesty. We've already cut them. As you can see, the eyes are starting to pop out on them. These potatoes are a deep, rich purple color. Uh, nothing better than having potato salad or something like that made out of purple potatoes. It just looks awesome. Now, I'm not a big fan of purple potatoes. I don't really care for the taste of them a lot. But we always like to keep something new here because uh, the purple potatoes are very high in anthrocyanins, which is a great cancer fighter. So we always try to uh, implement a little bit of the differences in our potatoes. And we do save them from year to year. We have a huge bed of them out here in the woods from last year from the... Uh, uh, all we planted three or four different purple varieties last year and we put some of them out here in the woods and just kind of like banked them up in the woods and they're already growing like crazy so we know that they'll survive over the winter and they they haven't been anything done to them okay guys we're going to plant the uh the local red potato first we're going to plant them about every i usually put them i used to put them every 12 to 14 inches apart i'm going to I'm going to put them closer together because I feel like I've wasted a lot of soil in the past. I'm going to put them about every eight inches apart so that I have nothing but wall-to-wall -wall potatoes down through here. I don't want to waste up all my fields with potatoes this year early. I'm going to plant them a little thicker, fertilize them a little heavier, and I feel like I'll do just as good. Now we always, and I know it probably doesn't mean anything, but I like for the eyes to be planted straight up facing me. To me, that just means they don't have to spend that time turning and coming back up. They just automatically shoot straight up out of the soil. Like the sun can reach the eye better. So we're going to get them all planted. Come back and cover them up. So far. One thing I might add, guys, one of the reasons we do a lot of planting our own potatoes is that. Uh, a huge percentage of the potatoes now are GMO. Uh, the Simplot potato has taken the market. And a matter of fact, if you go read the story on the man who invented it, he's really sorry that he invented it. He carries with it so much bacteria and stuff. Uh, the Simplot potato doesn't bruise it doesn't show rotted spots, and the man who created it says it doesn't mean that it's not there. He said it just means that it's been hidden. It's still there. The potato is still decaying like they always did. It's just hidden from the naked eye, and people who have intestinal problems will suffer greatly from them. So you don't have to take my word for it. The story is out there. Just go on the net, find him, look him up. read his story. I'm going to have more in a row of these. I'm going to have two rows of them. Make it to the all the way to the end.
Okay guys, what we're gonna end up with here, it's gonna be like a raised bed without borders. I mean, if you stay with us as we work these potatoes over the spring, by the time we get finished with them, you're gonna see what we're talking about. They're gonna be up on these big high mounds and there's not gonna be any borders to it. Now we're through planting the uh, local red ones. Um, I got a little piece of a row left here. In order to make sure that I don't get them confused, I'm gonna put some of the blue ones right here on this end and that'll kind of help me to know when I get to them that I've changed varieties of potatoes. Okay, this is the Yukon Gold we're planting here. Uh, white potatoes here don't hardly ever give us more than one or two potatoes per plant that has any size to them that matters. Uh, so we're gonna plant these pretty close because we just get such few potatoes off of the white ones. And hopefully we'll have enough here to have at least one row of the Yukon Gold. Okay, the first two rows, we have the local reds that we bought from here. The next row, we have the Kenebec whites. This row right here is going to be the French fingerlings. And if I run out before I get to the end, we're gonna take the French fingerlings that we saved and cut those off a little bit, the long sprouts on them, and finish the row out with them. All right, let's take some of these out. Got these old long ends on it here. We're just going to cut them off. We're going to leave them like that. We're going to put the whole potato in there. Guys, a lot of people think that you can't really use these because the potatoes in their cabinets do this. Yes, you can plant them. We have videos. You can go look the videos up uh, of us planting them. It's always been very successful. This is no different right here than when you plant them and they come up and it, you get a freeze on the ground and it kills the tops off on them. It's no different than doing this right here. We actually have a video uh, of Miss Wanda going back chopping the tops off of all the potatoes that came up whenever right before a freeze. So you can go back and check that out too. Now see there's one there that's just getting started good, which is nice. All right, we've got our last row here. We plowed one more row up and got it ready because we realized we didn't have enough made up. We've got our Kenebec Whites and our Purple Majesty. We're going to take the Kenebec Whites as far as they go, and when they run out, we're going to finish out with the Purple Majesty. That way we'll have a different potato. It's purple. We will know that we're, you know, we've changed potatoes on us there. So we're going to get these babies in the ground. this year taking a chance and yes it is cold out here Wanda and I started this morning it was below freezing and it's probably only about 38 right now but we're fixing to go get a bite to eat and then we're gonna head over to the other garden and we're gonna try to get a few little potatoes in the other garden and I got a lot of dozer work to do after that and then Miss Wanda is gonna take you on an adventure that we've never done which is she's going to be planting fingerling potatoes in a green stalk. That is something we've never done before. We want to try it because guys, it's all about experimenting right now while we can. And should one denies health deteriorate to the point where we can't get out in the field to do anything, we still have the greenhouses, but we would like to know if the green stalk will grow the fingerling potatoes because they're not giant potatoes. They're the small ones. Actually, they're our favorite, to be honest. They have a buttery taste to them. Uh, we just want to know. So Miss Wanda's going to take you on that adventure a little bit later on today. Well, these are our Deep South Homestead potatoes. Uh, we're noticing that the eyes on them are starting to swell. 
Uh, so we're going to go ahead and plant them whole. We're not going to cut them up and cure them or anything like that uh, because they really haven't been out of the ground long enough to, uh, for, the, for that to take place. So we're going to just plant the whole potato. one row of the Deep South Homestead potatoes. This is year number five on them. This row is going to be a little short row of the Yukon Golds. That's going to be our next uh, one to plant here. Not sure about the last row yet. We've got to check and see what potatoes we have left. All right, we've come back up to the garage now. Take a little break for just a couple of minutes. Uh, the garden's in the background down here. We ended up the last row, we planted the Austrian Crescent Fingerling Potatoes because we don't really have any more of those. Uh, they're really a nice eating little potato. Uh, so that gives us three more rows down here. And I think that's gonna be enough potatoes for us this year. We're not gonna overdo it. We still have so many left from last year already canned um, that we're not gonna try to overdo it this year. We're gonna try to just take our time, harvest the potatoes, use them as many fresh as we can, store up some for next year, like we did this year, and try to develop several different varieties that will hold up here at Deep South from year to year. We were all we were really surprised that the Kenebec Whites, the Yukon Golds, and the Austrian Crescents, the French Fingerlands, they all held up all year in the cellar without going bad, as long as we can get them in this time of the year, so. I'm around on the back of the patio and this little indention thing here is a concrete slab that Danny had that he wants to eventually build a barbecue grill on for outside, a brick barbecue grill. Right now I'm going to use it for this green stalk and I'm going to be planting the Russian white fingerlings. These are some that we saved from last year and the year before. We save them every year. These are some of our oldest fingerling potatoes that we have saved for many years. And I'm going to try the little, the smaller green stalk. Now the others I have, the, the pockets are deeper, about this much deeper. This one, because the fingerlings don't get very big, I'm just going to put one in each pocket and we're gonna work our way up. If I don't have enough of the uh, white Russians, I'm gonna use the French fingerlings in the top tiers that I don't have enough of these for. I'm gonna go around and just keep adding. This uh, is called a leaf green stalk. The others, like I said, are taller. This one's shorter. The, the, the older uh, original green stalk has five tiers. These, because they're shorter, have seven tiers. That gives you, uh, let's see, 35 versus 42 places to plant in, I believe. So I have more planting area. We're gonna see how potatoes do. I've not seen anybody growing potatoes in a green stalk. So we're gonna try it, and we're trying it with the fingerlings. We're down to the last two. I'm gonna sit this one on, but this is a self-watering tower. It waters from the top down. Each tier has one of these watering trays on it, on each one. The top one has this watering tray, and you water from the top tray, and it waters down, it self-feeds. Here I have my seven-tier green stalk. This is made by an American company here in Tennessee. It's awesome. Here is the uh, hole in the bottom of the roller base. Now I have a roller base so I can roll this around. I've got a tube to it so it comes off the concrete so we're not getting water up on our concrete. 
The roller basically allows me to take it anywhere on the patio I want to go. They make a Lazy Susan type thing that just sits here and you can spin it around if you don't want to move it. This is the seven tier leaf. I think they call it leaf because it's shorter than the other five tier. All the potatoes are planted. I ended up with all white Russian fingerlings in it. The top tray I'll fill with water and we won't be fertilizing these potatoes. I'm just gonna be watering because there's a self-release self -release fertilize in the topsoil and that's enough for potatoes. You fill up according to how many tiers you have. It has marks in here. I think you can see it on that side. I'll fill it to the top because we have all of them on here and each time it waters down into that one then underneath you see the white tray under there it waters down into it which feeds each individual leaf then it goes down into that tray and so on all the way down i'm gonna get danny to move the sink before long and we're gonna have these where they can grow here on the patio this is gonna be the spot for them until danny decides he's gonna build a um, fireplace or a grill and I can roll them with the roller base under the roof. Right now they're out from under the roof. They can get sunshine and stuff like they need to. But if it's too hot, I'll roll them under here and protect them from the elements. If I think it's going to freeze or something, I'll roll them back under here where the frost, things like that can't get to them. But guys, this is our potato plants for 2021. Thank you for joining us on our potato planting day. Talk to you later from Deep South Homestead.